one. All right, so we're live here on Alien Scientist. Uh, just to bring up Bob Lazar once again, because um, I tuned in live just for this at 8 o'clock p.m. on UFO Jane's YouTube channel. Um, she had Ryan Sprague, uh, this guy David Foley, who's a comedian, just started researching UFOs, knows really nothing about UFOs and, and re UFO research. And this guy, uh, Jeremy Corbell, if everyone everyone knows, my, my good friend Jeremy, um, <coughs> who created the That's Bob cool. Lazar documentary. Um, but, and, and Jeremy Corbell was on there, you know, telling a lot of interesting stories about all the... You know, it was a, a lot of really emotionally appealed arguments, you know, like to rile people up about all the non-Bob Lazar believers out there and, you know, like how we're all out to, you know, cover up the truth and, and, um, and, and there were debunkers and, and all this stuff. And I was, I, I was in the chat and, and for about, you know, two hours off and on, I was eating, cooking and eating dinner at, at the same time, but, um, it was an excellent uh, conversation going on in, in the chat on the sidelines, and they didn't really respond to much of the stuff that we were talking about. Um, none of the real evidence of the Bob Lazar case was really brought up, of course. Uh, they don't really touch into that, and they made a lot of emotional appeals against, you know, the people, you know, trying to attack the people like me. Oh, the, like, I'm the bad guy, you know, and, and, and I'm paid by the, you know, and there was people in the comments even saying, oh, there's people that are paid by the government to cover up the truth. And all this stuff, and and God, I wish I was, I wish I could make half the amount of money Jeremy Corbell has has made off, you know, the documentary he's put out. Um, but it, it, it's, per year, can you hear me? Or or the money that Bob Lazar has probably made off this, because um, we all know that you know. Hey, I can hear you, Dan. We can hear you. Okay, all right. I've been okay. And if I can hear you, then they should be able to hear you. Um, Said it was extended. But lots of interesting things that Jeremy Corbell said on this. Um, very little evidence was presented, but there was all these, uh, you know, arguments. Like even even to the ta talking about our friend uh, uh, Jennifer Marshall, um, who had that TV show where they investigated Bob Lazar and they talked to Jeremy Corbell and everything. And, and he said that oh they 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 said they kind of debunked Bob Lazar in the in the in the in the in the episode. But she came to me beside on the sidelines and says oh we have to do that for some reason and that you know she really believes bob lazar and that's complete bullshit he has n no evidence for this and he just says he just asserts this to like and, and kind of tells this hyped up story that it's like true it's like if you just believe that without like him showing you any proof it's like you're just falling for this 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 clown and this con artist's bullshit it's just Ah, I'm sorry. It's like hard for me to like keep, you know, I sit there and I try to not to like call, you know, this is bullshit or say like, you know, and, 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 and I, I, I almost, st almost lost my temper at one point in the chat, but it was like, you know, I get a hold of myself because I realize this is just people that are, are, don't know much about UFOs and, and, and aren't really as, as tuned into uh, the research as, as, you know, people that really dig in and really talk about the case. Median. They bring a comedian on that has no UFO experience at all. And he's like, all I had to do was sit there and listen to Bob talk, you know, and I believed him. When you're telling a story about aliens and all this shit, you have got to look at the source and you got to investigate it. They're only showing you, Dave Foley, what they want you to see. And I'm so aggravated. I got to be honest with this because I've wasted years of my life on this story. Yes, it has changed my life. Do I love the story and wish it was true? Absolutely. I used to dream about S4 at nighttime. Yeah. I don't anymore. Uh, I used to think about what the base would be like. I'm going to show you exactly what the, the UFOs base looks like and the hangars. I used to think about like the a, a big giant. I read those articles in like um, about the quarantines that you know like that they would have to do if they ever had an alien crash. Like the protocols, you know, all that stuff about the crash retrieval and stuff. And I used Got to have dreams. I used to have flying. dreams about that uh, when I read about it. Man, it was so. It was. It was crazy. I did. I did tons of research into where these facilities might be there's got to be like a whole bunch of them located all around and you know in case one of these ufo crash crashes happen that they have these facilities ready to go and bring them to these places and, Here, and here's, here's the deal guys i'm going to put a link in the live chat um good shit, and but... and i'm going to show you the drive.com 
a guy named, we got to give all the credit to a pilot named Gabriel Zeifman. I've spoken to him. Uh, I started messaging him a few weeks ago on Facebook Messenger. I found him. This guy entered R4606. And if you don't know what R4606 is, R4808 is the box, which is Area 51. Now, uh, so interesting about this is all this guy did, it was a weekend. It had rained terribly like the several days before. Area 51, the background even kind of looks strange because it's the, 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 the dry lake dark and it's got water and Papoose Lake is full of water. He flew right over Papoose Lake and what they will, what the Lazar camp will never tell you and it's been this way pre-Bob and after Bob. Only half of Papoose Lake is restricted airspace. Now, what happens is you have R4808 and the box. You have the box. Half of Papoose Lake is within that box. Now, you just can't fly up to that line. You've got to ask for permission. And this guy was flying a $16,000 Cessna that goes 100 miles an hour maximum speed. And he's very skilled, and he basically just said, hey, can I enter R4606 weekend? And they've been allowing other planes to fly in there, and they left him fly in there, and he flew right over Papoose Lake. And he's going back. He's done it two times. He didn't really know much about the Bob Lazar story. I educated him a little bit on it, sent him some material, because he said, people keep asking me about Papoose Lake. So I had the pictures from the Area 51 rider, before they even went public on the drive. And there's like 500 pictures, but I didn't have that many. And George Knapp interviewed this guy on Mystery Wire. Yep, and I was just showing the video. I was just showing the video. While you're talking about it, I was just showing the yep. Mystery Wire clip of George Knapp um, interviewing this pilot. And right around 11 minutes, Gabe Zeifman says, you know, everybody wanted me to talk about Papoose Lake and what I saw there. And he goes, of course, there's nothing there. As soon as he says that, they get him off of there within a minute. You can count it down at somewhere around a minute or so. George Knapp doesn't respond to that. And we're going to show you the images because yeah, let me play were sent to me from the guy. Yeah, go ahead, play it. Okay, um, hold up. There yeah. you go. Hope you're nothing there, you man. Sorry about my language. Yeah. Man. So yeah, no, there's nothing. Nobody's surprised when I when I'm there. <laughs> so you were in two way communication with the the tower out there. Well, with, with Nellis, Nellis, with Nellis. Uh, approach control, yeah. So they hey, the for, overline radar facility. Thanks a lot for sharing these photos with the world and with us. And yeah. hope you'll stay in touch. If you get some more, maybe we could go with you one of these times. Yeah, definitely. We're flying around out there, just as they're aware when foreign satellites are flying over the base, right? Yeah, no, yeah, I'm, I'm always talking to air traffic. They know who I am. I'm positively identified on radar, and I also go anywhere between like 70 and 100 knots, so they've got plenty of notice that I'm on the way. Uh, so yeah, no, there's nothing, nobody's surprised when, I, when I'm there. <laughs> so you were in two-way communication with the, the tower out there? Well, with, with Nellis. Nellis, yeah, Nellis so. approach control, yeah. So they hey, thanks, the Brent. overline radar facility. Thanks a lot for sharing these photos with the world and with us. And, and it's like, hey, get out. They kick him right off. Yeah, that's pretty funny. So, um, yeah, um, this is this is interesting. I want to show these photos and 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 kind of get into this because th this this is the first time we have high definition photos of Papoose Lake, and you can go and you can go and look this up. This is Area Fifty One right back here behind this Papoose Mountain. Um, and this is Papoose Lake right here with uh, the trail that goes around from Area 51, supposedly that Bob Lazar took. No guard shack, no parking lot, no fence. Um, it's just hey, a, Jeremy. You got to share your screen. Nobody can see it. No one can see this, huh? Great. Share your, it's uh, easy. You go down to share screen button. Go on it. Uh, See it? It's right. I, I, I should have my sh my screen shared. I don't know why it's not sharing. There, yeah. it's coming. It's going again. Yeah, there you go. It's sharing now. Yep. All right. So here's the 
photo of Papoose Lake and I'm trying to, you know, blow it up as big as possible um, for everyone to see. Um, and I'll share these photos with um, everybody. This is, you can clearly see uh, Area 51 beyond the mountain here. Um, and uh, oh, I wish I could go back. There's more more pictures. There's plenty more. Oh, this is more stuff about the Jerry Friedman stuff that you sent me. Um, this is the this is about that meeting um, that Gene Huff went to. It was the party at John Lear's house that you said Zorgon was at um, right, right before he died. Well, it was a year, it was six eight months before he died. Yeah, and Gene Huff and went off on Bob Lazar. I've got the places actually. So we've right already had out. we've already had people um, saying that this isn't this isn't really Papoose Lake. And they've been actually showing me other pictures of places that definitely aren't Papoose Lake, but definitely have something built into the side of a mountain um, and trying to use that as evidence. Um, and I'm like, no, I, I, I know where a couple of them are because I've seen that we, we've tracked, we've seen these pictures before and we tracked down where they are. Um, yeah. 51's in the background. The reason why the dry lake looks darker, I have the film of this it's because you can see down here, there's a big puddle of water. It rained like hell out there for two days. And um, yeah, there's the mountain. So here's the mountain I can range. Literally it's show looking, everybody exactly. It's looking across Papoose Lake up this way. This is Area 51 with Groom Dry Lake and the and and the and the nine mile long runway in the background. So just for some perspective. So here's the nine mile long runway. There's Groom Dry Lake, but it's not dry because it's got some water on it because it just rained. Um, this is Papoose Mountain, and I encourage you to like. To track down that you know the the topology in the landscape. This is definitely Papoose Lake. Show a little right there where S four was always supposed to be. It's right supposed to be there. There's nothing there. People say, oh well, maybe they built over. Yeah, no, this is a close up right shot. There. Yep, this is the close up shot. Of, this is right in that that spot where he said that S four was going to be, or should be. It's camouflaged in there, and I laughed at him. I said, really. Um, then the excuses, well, maybe it goes over it. Well, okay, I got satellite pictures and USGS pictures from 1951 where this has never changed. Well, also, I had the theory that, you know, like that it was gone like a tunnel, like, you know, like broken arrow, like they had giant tunnels going through the mountains and, and stuff here. And, uh, but it, it, you can see there's a really, there's a valley right here, right between these two peaks. This is, this is just like a little foothill on the other side. It doesn't make any sense for there to be a, I mean, it's, well, this is a hill. First of all, Bob said it was in the side of a mountain. Uh, this is not a mountain. This is a small hill. Jerry Freeman's head is right. You know, it's right behind Jerry Freeman's head too in that other photo. But so this is Papoose Mountain. This is there's no road going up there. That's the north um, end of Papoose Dry Lake, by the way. It's north end. Um. So there's a lot of like just just like. You look for evidence of the S4 facility, and I really wish that there was this facility that was there, um, but it's just not here. And the and and, and you know Let you go out and look for it. And also, um, Project 57 stuff that you showed me about how radioactive this place is, and the fact that that Jerry Friedman did the expedition out there it wasn't harassed by any guards. Um, went you know right out here looking for evidence of this lost 49ers trail. And um, and then died of uh, radiation sickness from all the dust that he breathed. Yeah, yeah. So, a form of spine cancer. Um, so it's interesting. Um, yeah, I want to get some uh, other people to hop on and, and and join us to talk about Bob Lazar because I had uh, invited. Let's put the Streamyard link in the chat. Streamyard's great. It's yeah, so Skype. we're on Streamyard for the first time. For those of you on YouTube, um, uh, and and on Skype and everything, I'm trying out Streamyard. And um, if you want the link for the Streamyard link, um, just text me or message me on, you know, wherever, and I'll send it to you. Um, I know there's a couple of people on Skype right now. I will send. I sent a few of them the link, so that they can uh, join us. Um, on the new StreamYard thing, we're trying that out for tonight. Um, but yeah, this is a lot of interesting stuff you sent me, and um, including, you know, we got some 
old pictures of Bob Lazar and his sister. This is crazy. He, he looks so young there, and he doesn't even have glasses on. But anyways, uh, the, one of the most interesting things about the Bob Lazar timeline, and we were, we, were, we were putting a, a documentary together about Bob Lazar and really digging into his past, um, you know, to try to put the best story together um, for, for him. And um, we found that uh, uh, quite a number of things about his degree from Pacifica University, um, the, his bachelor's degree in physics, where he got, you know, his bachelor's degree, uh, allegedly, and uh, some of the issues surrounding that school, um, and what he did, you know, the years that he was supposedly going to MIT and Caltech, and um, and the years that he worked at Los Alamos um, for Kirk Meyer Corporation, um, and also <laughs> how do I un you un you muted your mic, Dan? So um, I don't yeah, know I did that on purpose. If you wanted to add a little bit to the to the story, because I didn't I didn't know where you went. I was just making sure you were still there and that the stream was still good, but um. Yeah, we did a lot of a lot of investigation into the end of the years between you know it was the early '80s. So so I want to point out uh, one of the things that it's going to be in the documentary that you know I've got a couple clips here and stuff, and um, I want to show. So let's go just. This is really important. This is like the old school Bob Lazar. You know, this is the Lazar tape and excerpts from the government Bible, which is his first um, media production that they put out for the Bob Lazar. This is what introduced the world to Bob Lazar. Pretty Gene much. Huff. It's interesting. That's yeah, it well, Gene it says Huffard. it. So featuring Bob Lazar. Pay attention to the credits. We did, did you? It's all reading. You know reading the information and looking at it and like we're going to teach you how to what to look at and what to look for and the gene huff and bob lazar written produced and directed by gene huff and bob lazar okay so the whole screenplay for this and this whole tape was put together it says by gene huff and bob lazar so here he pulls up in his corvette with the mj12 license plate i don't know if you caught that but his license plate says mj12 Bob Lazar. During late 1988 and early 89, I worked on the propulsion systems of extraterrestrial vehicles. Yeah, but remember, he's not into UFOs. He never was into UFOs, although <laughs> I can counter all that. I've got all the stuff in Bob's. I use Bob's own mouth and his own words to tell the true story of what's happened. I don't use anything else. Um, his own words debunk him. Yes. So let's listen to his words. I'll give you a brief background. I'll give you a brief background, okay? So it's important that he gives you the brief background. I'm a physicist. I hear it, Jeremy. Degrees in physics and electronics technology. I worked in a number of scientific programs, some of which require top secret and above top secret security clearances, of which the most easily verifiable is my early 1980s job here at the Los Alamos Maison Physics Facility in Los Alamos, New Mexico. Okay. Between December. So, so, right. It, pay attention. He says his early 1980s job at Los Alamos, and this is this, that's the most e easily verifiable part of his story. Because yeah, he worked at Los Alamos in the early 80s, but there's a huge gap between 1981 and 1982. And look, look at he what he jumps to. And then he jumps right to in in in, in the next part of that documentary. Oh, is that cut off? I'm gonna have to go and get, yeah. get the longer. You mean clip from eighty two? He from jumps right from eighty nine. Yeah, he jumps right from nineteen eighty two to nineteen eighty nine, and that's key because there's a lot of history that happened in those seven years. Uh, you know, between between nineteen eighty two and nineteen. Yeah, I was I was born in nineteen eighty two, so it's kind of, you know, for me 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 turning seven. You know, that a lot a lot happened. You know what I mean? So there's a lot of you know, going back into this this part of Bob Lazar's history turns out to be uh, tell us teach us a lot about um, everything that was going on in Bob Lazar's life and uh, and gives leads us to a lot of questions about you know whether he was the guy you know to hire to go and work on top secret programs because uh, I, as I mentioned we talk about a number of different scientists on this program and and their involvement in top secret programs and a lot of different top secret research on, and, and science. That's, that's pretty much what my channel is about. That's what we talk about. Um, 
on all my streams. Um, but it's just crazy that this, this topic has just, it just keeps getting more and more, um, attention and that people don't quite call these things into question ever and just let this stuff slide and, 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 and accept it. It's, it's such, uh, it's such madness. And it's like, it's almost like the, it's, it's easy for them to control the opposition because everyone thinks that, you know, I'm a shill and I'm disinformation when I'm just trying to show people better information and better science and, and, and more legit technologies. Um, but it, it's just crazy that, that, that there's so much involved in this and, and it, it's almost like we need to put together a, a full documentary going into, um, all the history, and I, and I want to update, you know, with a couple new things on, on the website about those pictures that you show, the new flyovers, that's, that's, that's some bomb stuff, uh, high definition uh, photos now of Papoose Lake, showing that there's nothing there, and then we have, and people that say like, oh, they, they covered it up uh, when people started learning about it after Bob Lazar went public in the, you know, early 90s, we have satellite photos going back to, you know, which I, by the way, I need to update. I'm going to put a whole page on here about S4 on this. I got. To, I'm going to update this site and really organize the information and the breakdown of it all, um, in a much better, um, a much more clear fashion. And I got to correct a couple things in the biography because I've been doing more research into, into Bob's history and learning, learning more about. Um, yeah. So here's some of the pictures that people posted. Oh, this is the base and. Uh, it's, you can tell you're talking to a 12 year old who just started researching that this is not three months the ago. Base. Yeah, that so the yucca that they put the waste barrels in. So how about the bit? How about the um? Let's, let's talk about some of the interesting research that we've done into uh, the, the anomalies that people have spotted out there. That you know, like, and, and that we've spotted out there. In our own research, you know, like uh, let's go to Google Maps and talk about some of the stuff that we found out there, and then and then doing doing research into this stuff, thinking, you know, w there was that thing that we thought was the UFO, right? Um, Area Fifty One. The water guzzlers, where they have three of them, then they have a rectangle that's seventy feet long by thirty feet wide. I don't think anybody can fuck it or something. Yeah. So, um, yeah. So this is Area 51, and we found these. Um, we found those things that looked like UFOs, the circles that were out there, but they ended up being. Uh, they were water tanks for the bighorn sheep. Remember, Dan? They looked like these circles, these discs, and people thought they were UFOs. And there was a bunch of videos about it talking about those discs, and then we did the research. We found someone on, out on the ground who who knew the area real well and went out, you know, and 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 we, and it was all on that whole thing. The about guy called him. Can right. you hear me, Jeremy? No, Can I anybody can't. Hear me. God damn. Okay. So if you look up the stuff about the Area 51 land grab too, you find all the stuff about the bighorn sheep and that there's farmers out there that farm the bighorn sheep and that's, you know. Um, and I can't hear Dan. I don't know what what they're doing. My debt, my guest. See, we you suggested uh, the streamyard thing, and and it, now it's not uh, it's not liking you. It doesn't like Dan coming on here to talk about Bob Lazar. Uh, it's crazy, like how they that they got that group together with George, Jeremy Corbell, and that they don't bring any you know skeptics or debunkers on. It's just all you know. And they didn't really provide much evidence, which I thought was, you know, disappointing. You know, it, it seems like a lot of, a lot of belief involved in this stuff, um, in that side of things. But um, again, this is a lot of information for a, you know the average person when they see this stuff. It's kind of overwhelming, and it's just like, no, but I'd rather you know if you're not like dedicated to the science and really doing the research and learning and progressing. Um, your understanding of the subject, then, yeah, it, it just seems like, oh, well, you know, you're just, this is disinformation, and, and uh, I don't want to listen to you because you debunk Bob and, and want to change my reality on it, but it's, again, I'm not a debunker, I, you know, I know it's, I put BobLazarDebunk.com because it's, you know, 
It is. He is. He deserves to be debunked because he is bunk. But I'm not a debunker. I'm a truther. I'm looking for truth, and and I'm looking for real Area 51 technology and how flying saucers work and how UFOs work and how they fly. And um, this is not it, man. This Area Element 115 reactor, all this stuff I showed, like the real science that it came from. You know the story. Um, behind it from Los Alamos, the real scientists that died when they, you know, were playing around with the, this thing called the Demon Core and this reactor. Um, the movie that came out pretty much, this, uh, you know, the, uh, the same year or earlier that year, the same year of uh, that Bob Lazar came out with his story. So it was, you know, well known and out there in the, you know, in the mainstream. And it was, you know, a pop popular science movie that came out in, in the in the theaters around that time. It would have been something Bob Lazar would have gone and seen. You know, we can trace back so much stuff to movies, TV shows, um, and just things about the, from the time. Um, and then the whole thing with the, uh, why he was running a brothel, why he was hanging out with Gene Huff and going to John Lear's house, holding a tape measure, um, and have running a photo um, processing business um, for so many years. We have it, you know, from his 1986 bankruptcy filing that he he was basically um, doing photo processing uh, as his career up until you know the early 90s when we have his pandering conviction with the with the honeysuckle ranch where he was running the brothel and the prostitutes and tried to get george knapp involved um or, or told him about it and george knapp ratted on him and, and called the cops on him and got bob Azar arrested and um and then it, like uh, he thought the story was over then and there but it, it, you know George Knapp realized, oh, the story's not going to die. It's never going to die. I can continue to, you know, keep selling this and make money off it, you know, as long as I, I, uh, you know, people, people want to believe it because there's always a crowd that wants to believe it. And, and I don't doubt that this kind of similar kind of programs have taken place, but it's, it's, it's really just a disservice to the real research and the, uh, and the real classified programs and the, and the real stuff that, you know, Black Vault, Black Vault and all these other researchers have brought out of the shadows with regards to the science and technology that just gets covered up and hidden by, by the people that, um, that make it all about Bob Lazar. And then the scientists don't look in, look further into the information because they're like, this guy, Bob Lazar, is just silliness. And it just helps with this whole, um, you know, facade of, 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 you know, keeping the stereotype of, of these UFO community and keeping the UFO community stuck on disinformation and, and nonsense and, and lies, but, um, and, and a way, and not from look, a way, keep them from really looking into, uh, disclosure and stuff that will lead to disclosure and real information and real, um, secrets and real documents and stuff. So, a lot of interesting stuff about Bob Lazar. I want to talk about, the, I want to add the stuff about the Zeta Reticuli 2 Corporation, the stuff we learned, um, and some of the documents out of that, because there, there's some interesting research there that's not on this site. I don't, I don't think it's not here anyway. I'm, I'm going to have to, you know, organize this a little bit better to make sure I include everything. But Bob Lazar had a, a, um, a partnership, actually, and got $2 million, apparently, from Bob Bigelow's company, Bigelow Aerospace, which, as you know, is the same guy that had the whole... Um, Skinwalker Ranch and whatnot, and Dan's now trying to call me on the phone. I'll let him talk. I'm back. I'm backstage. You have to add me when someone. Oh, when you leave. In, you have to, it's not like uh, Skype. You got to add him. I've been sitting, I've been here, sitting for here for a few, a few minutes. minutes. Oh, okay. here you are. You're right, on. Right. Okay. Can can people hear me this time? Yeah. Yeah, we can. And we got another guy, uh, Sean Richter, that wants to come on. Fine, fine. Bring every, bring every, bring six people. In. I think you bring six or eight people in with this. All right, I'm gonna try it out and, ch and check this out. Sorry, it was, it was a little boring talking to myself, and I was I was trying to keep it. Uh, well, no one could hear me, going. so I literally had to sh reset. I shut everything down and came back in That's right away. That's weird. Now we can hear you. So what's up? Let's well, talk. I wanted to go over. I, I really wanted to hammer this Papoose Lake thing and explain to people that guess what? I'm going on a flight, and I'm going to fly right over Papoose Lake. Wait, you're and going I'm with going this guy? You're gonna, yes. Yeah, you've been talking yes. to him. I know that. You're, you're going to go out there and actually fly on a flight and go right by a Papoose Lake. I'm right going here. to pay him or someone else a lot of money to fly me over. He's flown over twice. I have a lot of images to share. 
Look um, at all the details, all the ge like you can't fake that. Like the geogra these no, these pictures are, are definitely of Papoose. I mean, look, look at look at the it detail. It hasn't changed at all. I wanted to share a screen and show people the images I've got that go back decades of the I mean, yeah, I have here you a satellite image in 1952. Why don't you share your screen and I'll I'll let you I'll, I'll let people show you do that. Dan, can you share your screen? Hold one second. I'm putting the drive article in the chat so everybody can see it. This All is right. where these images are. I'm going to bring them up on my screen because I have a copy of them somewhere. Um, let me just find those. Okay, I'm going to share screen here in a second. 2020. No. Okay, share into our screen. Share audio. Yeah. Jeremy, are you sharing the screen right now? Because it doesn't want to let me just Oh, share. yeah. I'll stop sharing. Oh, you yeah, yeah, yeah. No, you can do it, maybe. Okay, yeah. Let me try it again. Now. All right. Well, so I just I'm, want to show people. It's so one. important. It's so important. Okay. Okay, share. Yeah, those details are so unmistakable. The three things in these lines. That's so unmistakably, you know, this, this curve structure. Let's go yes. back to it, Google Maps. I'm going to break it down here in a second. You I want to show people curve. the flight path. It's pack. very light, but it probably comes out more when it, after it rains. But you can definitely see all those huh. features, these little striations. Um, yeah. It's absolutely the same thing. You know what I mean? Sure it is. Okay, let me know when my screen is sharing. It's kind of weird. It says my screen sharing. Got to get used to StreamYard. It's different. Okay, so Dan's screen. Um, all right, Dan's you have screen. To stop I can sharing. see it. I can see yours. You can now. see my screen. Yeah. Okay. All right, no. I'm gonna hammer this home. First of all, here's the drives article, and this goes over the one guy earlier that was on that video we were just on tried to say, "Hey, man, those pictures of Papoose Lake are a joke." He said they're from way up in here. He's looking at these. Okay, yeah, these are satellite images. He never went down here. This guy took pictures all over the Nevada Nellis training range. I couldn't believe it. Um, here's some of his instrumentation. Yeah, I just, post, I just posted a link to that in the live chat. So. Okay. All right, well, hold Lazar on. Would, someone said Lazar would school, would school who? Would Lazar would school me or, you know? Hello? Yeah, show us one person who went to school with him. One. Here's Area 51 in the background. You can see how watered out it is. That's why it doesn't look like itself. Here's Papoose. Right here is the little, there's the little, I call it the uh, Italy, the boot of Italy right there. Right there is where Bob said it was. And I'm going to prove this to everybody right now. I'm going into my files. Okay, yeah. so get ready. All right. Now, this is Papoose Lake from a 1952 USGS um, sat, or imagery. Uh, it's not that great, but then again, it does show Papoose Lake in 1952. Okay, so hang on a minute here. Yeah. Let's go to 1959. Here's a much better image. Now, what I want to do is I want to zoom in on that same spot where Bob claims that S4 is, which would be right here, right are these hills. You yeah. have this little spot to do. Here's the Buddha Italy. Right here's the little spot. This is, uh, what is this, 59. Okay. So now let's go to uh, 1968. This is actually a spy satellite image by the Soviet Union. And take a look. Once again, here's a spot. No change at all. Nothing. I don't see any roads or. In, there's many people that said, "Oh, they built that thing back in the you know the right you know right after Area 51 was built." Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Right. Okay. So hang on a second here. Um, Okay, let me see where I want to go with this. This is epic. This picture here is so good. Um, right here is that little spot. Now, here's what's interesting. If you go to Google Earth, it hasn't changed one bit. There's not one change. And you can go back in Google Earth forever. There's not one change. Bob in his drawing, which I'm going to show here a little bit later. I used to always find this spot here interesting on the Google map, but it's nothing. Um this is it right here, and I'm going to show you something. So here is, uh, let's see here. Here's Bob Lazar's, okay. There's a point in time when Bob Lazar, and he has a good friend named John Farrat, F-A-R-H-A-T. 
John Farrar was a special effects guy, and he commissioned the Soviet Union satellite photo. I know that sounds insane. Um, of Papu's Lake that they used on the Bob Lazar testers uh, corporation model, the plastic little model you could buy. And that drawing, let me find that bad boy. Where is it? But there's something very interesting about it. Oh, by the way, this is what an Area 51 badge should look like. Right there. That's actually a real Area 51 badge. Um, that's a security guy. That's a guy that ran security. Um, let me show you something here. I want to show you what they sh they said. Papus or the Bob Lazar uh, people said that S4 looked like prior to them getting a hold of that satellite image. Which, by the way, there's no change with the satellite image either. Hang on. Jesus, look at all these pictures. Um, this one's this one's one of my favorite. Where's this one? Look at this. That says it all. Bob and Jeremy love each other. Okay, here we go. They used to. <laughs> I don't think they do anymore. I don't think Bob loves him. So, what do you think about um, the fact that you know so much of the Bob Lazar story looks like um, looks like what Richard Doty was spreading for the U.S. Air Force, according to you know you know his yep. story, you know in Mirage Men. I, I watched Mirage Men, and that yep. really really put put a lot. Of, it really made. Me, sense of the whole bob lazar story because i'm like yep. science scientifically the element 115 story makes no sense and there's so much other stuff that was going on in area 51 at the time yep. um metamaterials research you know invisibility cloaking um you know the carbon yeah. nanotubes surface coatings the bifel brown effect that led to the you know the b2 spirit bomber um, and the advanced, the, not the spirit, but the advanced technology bomber, the one with the bi that one yeah. that you know charges the uh, ion exhaust that ionizes the yeah. exhaust trail and the leading at Electrical wing edge. Of yeah. yeah, and then they have you know all the stuff that they were really working on out there. And Bob Lazar doesn't talk about you know hard any of that stuff. And he he and, was and, if he even was there, he was only there a total of six days. Here's what's right. interesting. Yeah, you go through the timeline. Name, the timeline is just kills the story, dude. You see this through. name right here, people? John Farrat. John Farrat is the guy that's in the video with Bob Lazar when Bob Lazar does his hydrogen gas powered Corvette. Gray haired, curly haired guys, John Farrat. He had this drawing done on Bob Lazar. Bob Lazar and him had this drawing done. And this is what S4 supposedly looked like. Now, oh yeah, that was, yeah, yeah. That was before they got the satellite. Then, when they got the satellite images, now all of a sudden they've changed it to look like this because they realize, oh shit, there's only a couple of hills there. We're gonna make it look like it goes into the side of the hillside. See this? Yeah. So he blends it into that little hill, and then there's something. There's a landing site over here. It's supposed to be cement. Here's an airplane sitting. Here's a bus. You yeah. know, and then there's a, I think right next to this is the, uh, let me see here. Oh, this was Bob. And these were, these were people working with Bob that were like really believers of his, you know, and being like, all right, tell me exactly just how this envision, you know, going through Bob's yeah. memory, you know, basically Bob's imagination and drawing pictures from, of this. This is yeah. from the original Bob .com before he totally shut it down for five years and changed it. You got nine hangars. Each one of them is 40 yeah. feet wide. We'd have a total of 360 feet. And there would be at least one to two feet between each hangar. It'd have to be for walls. So yeah. right here's that little area we can identify. This is because John Farratt bought that satellite image of Papoos. Again, there's no roads. There's no nothing. And I actually have that satellite image here. Oh, here's a comparison of the Billy Meyer ship. John Lear shows uh, Bob Lazar the Billy Meyer takes, and all of a sudden John or Bob Lazar's craft right here looks identical well, to the Billy didn't, Meyer being ship. Um, according to John's testimony on George Knapp, we have that video clip. I, I, I posted it in one of my videos on Bob Lazar. Um, we know that... Bob Lazar and Gene Huff went over to bought, went over to John Lear's house and took measurements of his house and then yep. traded him a, an appraisal on his house in exchange for all of John's UFO files, including all the Billy Meyer stuff. That's so, the story, if you believe it. No, that's, that's the, yeah, that's the story that they told and that John That's told. what they told, yes. That's what they told. This is very interesting. Here, this video, uh, John or Bob Lazar is in this video stating that the craft was run off two gravity amplifiers, not three. Now, all of a sudden, this craft has had one of the gravity amplifiers ripped out of there, and that they used to crawl down underneath and turn the um, 
the crap or turn the gravity amplifier at 80 degrees um, so that they could shut the nuclear reaction going off, which is absolutely ridiculous. Um, I don't want to show this because it might get a copyright strike, but yes, it went from having three perfect gravity amplifiers in it to having two and one being ripped out, the whole being in the floor. I don't remember seeing that in any of the models. Here's the path that Gabe Zeifman went, went through. He went straight down here. He went south. Right here's the R4808 box. He ca actually came right here. He came here, went down. Right here's Papoose Lake. And I can't see the bottom of that. Scroll down a little bit to the bottom of it. Can't? No, that's too high. Like, you got to zoom out or something. I'm not. I'm, I'm, it's um, dude. It's dude. Um, you can't see where half of Papoose Lake is? Can't see that arrow right there? Yeah, let me pull the screen off. Uh, how do I start to uh, remove this screen? Um, Doesn't matter. All you need to know is if you go to the R4808 box in the map of Area 51, only half of Papoose Lake is restricted airspace. That's why this guy was allowed to fly over and take these incredible freaking pictures that are just totally being discounted. I mean, look at this. Let's go through them one at a time. Look at that. Right there is where S4 is supposed to be. Let's yep. zoom the hell in. Look at this. It's supposed to be right there. But my point is, people, it hasn't changed from the 1952 satellites. How in the hell is that possible? You can't discount this. This is evidence. This is pictorial evidence. This is not a Google Earth image. This is there's water on Papoose Dry Lake. Let's go to the next one. Hang on here. Yeah, yeah, this is kind of hard to deny. It's like... He, here it he is. insisted is he insisted that there was a base here for years and even led people yep. on this this story about it and, and and to the point of drawing pictures like this and having them on his website yep. which he's since there taken is down. a road there is a road that comes down here but if you follow that road they take that road to a shortcut over to yucca lake which is over that way they do use it as a shortcut and then this road here goes around to the back side uh and it's another shortcut Let's, let's go on here. You ought to get a Tyvek suit, one of those, you know, um, biological suits. I would suits never and, go on uh, Papoose Lake, bro. Mm -hmm. Not after what happened, not after reading the Project 57 stuff. See, Area 51's all watered out. That's why it's it's weird to people. And that happens. Papoose Lake's full water. Right there's the spot, guys. That's supposed to be S4. Explain to me how they covered it up or how they built it with zero evidence I mean, they'd have to have gotten bulldozers in there and changed all this. Bullshit. I don't believe it. Uh, I will never believe it. Um, he's going to have to get a chunk element 115 to make me believe this story at this point. There's Jerry Freeman. He yeah. walked right on. There's this the exact same spot. There's the little hill. He didn't get shot by the Bob claim that back in the day on the Billy Goodman show that if you got on the Papoose Lake Range, that Black Navy Seals would kill you. And that was a scare tactic. Oh, man, don't ever try and walk on there. And Jerry Freeman in his diary talks about that. He says how he was scared because he didn't actually know what was going to happen. Um, here is a satellite image of Papoose Lake, and there's what a little S4 uh, sport model would look like going and landing right, you know, in the in the spot where Bob claimed, or that would be right here. Yeah. Right here it would be because here's the boot. Always look for the boot in that little opening. Yep. You know, that's what it would look like. Um, trying to show something else on yep. here to be interesting. Uh, here's where TD Barnes called him a total fraud. Um, that's oh, on map. What there's else? two live streams on YouTube simultaneously. That's pretty weird, wild. I didn't, uh -huh. know that. I didn't know I'm doing two two live streams on YouTube. That's pretty wild. Hmm. Anyway, I would ex I would just tell people this. I don't want to tell people to make their own minds up. I shouldn't. I shouldn't. I want people to make their own minds up, but I shouldn't be telling people, hey, don't yeah. please. Look at the evidence. Those people Just look in that at the evidence, do your research. Were like, All you need to ever do is listen to Bob, and you you know he's telling the truth. Man, there's con men all over the world. I mean, look up yeah. con artists. Another thing, too, we haven't gone over yet, Peter Hyatt, who trains the FBI in linguistics, and he trains them in um, – you know, he trains detectives and stuff like that on how to figure out if someone's lying when they're being, there's the pilot. I think I've seen this guy before, Peter Hyatt. Um, yeah, remember I showed him to you because Richard Hall had him on about the moon landings and stuff, and he was reading the statements. 
If yeah, like this, this guy's day, from the FBI, right? And he, he did a whole bunch of cases where, like, oh, there was a whole thing on him where he did. Trains the FBI, bro. Yeah, he, way, he 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 got this woman and like totally broke her down and like proved she he knew like that he the or it was like this 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 like it was tons of these cases like this where the woman killed the husband or the husband killed the the woman and he, he it's they the best like, and, in the world and he comes in and just world. rips it apart, dude. And he like he claims Bob's a total for a liar. He anyway, cleans up. Yeah, this guy's good. I've seen some Here's, of his stuff. I want. I just want to show people this area that Zeifman. He actually was able to travel incredibly. Um, he came down this way, and then right there, you can see Papoose Lake is right here. Here's Area 51. Only half of Papoose Lake is within the box. It's R4806 West. Is he? And he asks on the video to fly through there. So now, hang on a minute here. Some people might be saying, "Oh, well, that's some bullshit." I want to see the video. Well, I've sped the video up a little bit. Here's one of his trips. Can you guys see this? Oh. He did two trips. Watch this. Right here. There's it. There's Papoose Lake. Right here. He's flying over Papoose Lake right now. Right here's the hills. Right here's the tiny hill. Can you see it? Yeah, yeah. I mean, he's flying over Papoose Lake right now. I mean, it's not a flight simulator. It's real, man. All you got to yeah, do is type this in here. That's definitely it. That's legit. He's definitely Rachel Nevada, the Henderson executive. This type this in. You'll find a video. Gabriel Zeifman. Go to his page. This is shocking. This video is an hour and forty-one minutes. I was so blown away by what I saw on there. And he had yeah. a camera hanging out and started taking pictures. Camera to the right. Um, yeah, he debunked this entire story in one flight, which I never thought would happen for years, Jeremy. But it's finally happened. I'm going to stop sharing. All right. So the what are the truth? So someone, is there anything you consider that to be true that Bob said? And, and there are some elements that are like sl truthful. Yeah, that are in his story. Yeah, there's tons of no. truthful statements that he's made. Like he, he goes over Here's this whole the... thing about like that whole video of him breaking down like science. He goes over like all the high school physics and chemistry, but then he like makes these wild jumps to these other things and makes you know these. You know the claims like the the strong for the strong nuclear force is really the gravity B field and you know the gravity. That... Here's, okay, here's what I would do if I was Bob Lazar. Okay, if I had a master's degree at MIT and I had a master's degree from Caltech and they were saying I was a liar, I'd sue both schools for a billion dollars. I would never have to work ever again. They yeah. would be totally discredited. Um, it'd be it'd be virtually so easy to prove you went there. He doesn't have one picture of when he went, when he attended these schools. Um, oh, that's another thing. Uh, some new evidence we got to bring up uh, that that hasn't been you know not a lot of people know about, right? So the whole clip, there's that clip. Uh, let's find it, and I'll play that clip real quick. Um, and I hope people like take this live stream and cut it up and make a freaking you know like. He had to lie about the schooling to get people to believe him. That's what people don't get. If he wouldn't have lied about the schooling, no one ever would have took him serious. If he would have tried this story in this age, it would have never even made it anywhere because it's been debunked so easily with the Internet. Yeah, um, that's true. You know, I mean, the degrees had to have been there. I love the story. I wish it was true. But it's been an been nothing but an aggravation for the last two years. And I'm just sick of it. But I am happy that this guy came out with this footage. Um, there's other pilots apparently that have flown the same flight. I don't know if they've taken pictures or not. I bet they did. Um, I'm, I, I hope to be on one of these flights in the next couple of months with this guy or someone else. I'll pay another pilot to do it. On the weekend, all yep. you have to do is to ask to go into R4806 and they allow it. So I mean, I finally found the, the, the uh, folder I was looking for. Um, let me find the video we were talking about. Um, what we were just talking about with regards to Bob. Oh, the lie, the, the clip of him lying. Busted. Oh, about the schooling? Yeah. Oh, sh why don't you show the picture of his professor? Yeah, that's what I want to show is him, the, the clip of him lying and then the picture of the professor. So I got the picture of his professor. So he in, in this one clip, he, he's asked to name his professors from MIT and Caltech. And he says, of course, yeah. Oh, Dr. Duxler was my professor from, from Caltech, and, and Dr. Hosfield was one of my professors from MIT. Right? Well, it turns out... 1993, Little Alien. Uh, Little Alien, 1993. Look it up. 
So we looked up uh, Bob Lazar's high school um, yearbook, and we got it. Um, and here's a picture of a, uh, one of the pages of the technical and vocational teachers, and his technical and vocational uh, teacher, for his, basically his physics teacher, his science and physics teacher in, in high school was Mr. Frederick Hosfield. Yeah, and show the video clip. Do you need me to there show it is. to you? There he is. Here's it zoomed up. And play it out loud because his volume's low on it. I can't see anything. Yep. Um, so, and I have that clip. Um, yeah, share your screen and show it and put the volume up because everyone needs to see this. This is absolute proof. There's no way you can mix a high school shop teacher up with a professor that's going to land you a job in the in the real world. No way. No, there's no way. This is like proves that he's lying and lying straight out and flat out, and that he's really good at lying and and, and looking straight face in the camera and lying. He's a damn um, good liar. He was a freaking pimp at one time. I mean, that's what pimps do. So this is uh, my video: how Bob Lazar debunked himself, and no one in so UFO actually noticed. Um. And here's the clip. Let's. Uh, can't you share on your screen? Because I can't see it. I'm about to share it right now. So here it is. Ready? This the one. Still can't see it. Oh, it takes gotta, a minute gotta, when you share the screen, bro. I gotta share my screen in that other window. Hold up. So let me. Uh, yeah. It's because you're running two YouTube live streams. I think it's screwing everything yeah. up. Yep, yeah, it is. It is. Shut one of them down ASAP. And All right. turn the volume way up because you can barely hear it being asked. Yeah, He's asked I about know. Both I... He says about his instructors and then says, I can give you a list sometime if you'd like. Right. So Tom Mahood asked him that question, <laughs> by the way. Yeah, this was Tom Mahood who asked him the question. And um, Tom Mahood deserves uh, big I wish, I wish I could jack this up louder. It's so quiet. No, it's a master's degree. No, it's a master's degree. The year, what was the year he graduated? Probably. Probably eighty-two, because I think I left there. Eighty-two. Jeremy, hang on a minute. Stop that. There's a share audio. When you go to share screen, there's a share audio section. You have to click share audio. Yeah. That's oh. what's wrong. Go back and click share. Stop and then share again and then share audio and it'll play. I'm gonna post. I'm gonna post the video with a timestamp so people can go and watch that. You know. I want people to hear it though on here. It's More hard. Effective. It's too quiet. It's too quiet. It, it, I jacked well, up. Hit, I already jacked up the volume three times. On and you hit clip. the share. And you hit the share audio uh, from the, also. From the screen, when, when I when I copy this video and I posted it in the video editor, I, I jacked the volume up like three times the, the volume. Okay. Well, I know when you share the screen, it asks you if you want to share audio also. you got to hit yes. So here's the key part. Um, and I'm going to share this video at the at the timestamp. Dude, it doesn't matter. This None of this fucking matters. Nobody's watching this. We're going to put a video together on Bob and a, 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 a whole summary video with all the research we've done. And I've got the script already for it. And we're, we're going to release this. And it's going to get 100,000 views. and hopefully introduce a whole world of people that are interested in this to uh some real physics and also sure and also like fuck field. with the debunkers because the debunkers you the de we posted all this the bob lazar stuff and our research was so good the debunkers were copying our stuff because they they were like you know mick west was you know giving posting links to bob lazar debunk.com because he his research on this wasn't nearly as you know in, in depth and, and as good as ours so he was posting links to our stuff it, it you know and and that's Show good because it gets stuff, man. and I, that got me an interview with Mick West and got me talking to him and and got me to share a bunch of stuff that might you know you know I mean some of these guys really don't care and they're not you know there to be reached but you know it's, it's, hopefully I got some information out to some some of the the people in his audience you know some some information got people to think differently about certain stuff. Cause that's what I'm about. I, I, I approach things from a way di a different perspective than everyone else, and you know, I don't care if people like it or not. But you know, the, my analysis is what it is, and I'm no bullshit, no uh, no punches, no holds barred kind of guy. I'm gonna speak my mind and say and say it like it is, 
and um, you know if are you uh are you gonna show the host field picture or what yeah so i can't find the i i don't know where that is but um i have the host field picture um i'm gonna send it to you so hold on i have it uh hold on so i have this the picture of host field right here and um yeah, so he says Dr. Duxler, and we found Dr. Duxler. He uh, was his professor at Pierce Junior College, where he did take some electronics courses. Um, don't believe my he... name is covering up his fucking uh, thing for some reason. Yeah, go I know. To it's to the left. Go to the one to the left there. Also, it showed all the teachers in the vocational part of the school he went to. Also, it shows them all, and then you can see his name. I wish I could share the friggin' script I have written because it's so much more, everything's so much more put together in a you know, clear and well-explained order and it's just no pauses, no skips, and no no bullshit. Once we edit it all down, it's just going to be... So here's I'm not William. sure why my name is on the bottom there. When I do, a, when I do other uh, uh, stream yards, that's not there. Yeah, it has something. Uh, how do I get rid of this? Oh, you sh should be an X somewhere, you X out of that, man. Fucking shouldn't be on there, dude. Yeah, I don't know how to get rid of that fucking thing. To pick, it pisses me the fuck off too. This is why I hate these programs, dude. Like they should make them super easy to use, but like they're not. Uh, well, what if I drop out? And will that will that get it off of there? I have no problem leaving here. Overlay. Show. Um, I want someone to show the. I want you to show the pictures of the host field. There we go. Boom. Let's take that off. People can listen to him bullshit and say, "Oh yeah, host field." He says H O S uh, F E L D or F E I L D. He says something like that. That was his high school sh electronics teacher. He said that was his MIT physics professor. I click, I unclicked show display names and it did nothing. So I don't know what the fuck to do. Yes. I don't know. I don't know. It's, it's... Uh, who cares? Just show the pictures and banners. Um, Example banners. I don't know. I, I haven't figured all this out, the stream yard shit, and apparently I got two streams going at once, one with 37 people watching, one with 102 people watching. Yeah, it's lagging like a minute. Yeah, anyways, fucking podcast is turning to shit right now. Great. <laughs> Um, anyways, anything else we want to talk about with Bob Lazar? Um, I, I posted that video. Show I the think. picture. His high school teacher with the rest of the teachers, and you can clearly see his name is Frederick Osfield. You didn't do that. Yeah, man. I did. I already showed this. I already talked about this. I don't know what the one to the left wasn't sharing, but the one to the left, man, it was so right there. The I full saw thing, it. You know, so. Here's the full thing. We also got a, we found a Robert Hofield from who went to MIT, and we uh, yeah, that's no one. It's that's no one. It. Has nothing to do with it. Wrong person. Um, but that yeah, that's this is all the teachers. Shop teacher that he claimed was his MIT professor live at the Little Alien in 1993. Um, Dan. Why Lewis, would he I lie about that? that I mean. It's just kind of silly how the, this guy would go from working at MIT, uh, you know, going to MIT, going to Caltech, and working as this brilliant physicist uh, at, you know, Los Alamos, on, working on top secret programs, to holding a fucking tape measure for Gene Huff over at John Lear's house, who's like the king of ufology and king of UFOs.
And then they oh. learn all the UFO information from this guy, buy, you know, trade him an appraisal on his house for all his Billy Meyer tapes and, and all the Billy Meyer information. And then just a couple months later, Bob Lazar is suddenly working at Area 51 um, and, you know, telling Bob that, you know, he's working out at the yeah, top UFOs. secret base. On UFOs, on reverse yeah. engineering, you know, this, this, the, these alien, alien spacecraft. And his sports oh, model sorry. looks, you know, we, we, I, we did a similarity, you know, from this is Billy Myers' beam ship. Identical. And this is Bob Lazar's sport model, you know, and just so happens that this craft that, you know, he worked on at this imaginary hangar that we've done all this research in to try to prove that it does exist, and all we've done is prove that it doesn't exist. <laughs> oh, and do, do people want the video clip where John Lear says we showed him the Billy Fire tape? Because if you show that on here, the hunk of shit that owns the channel, he will, uh, he'll, he striked me, and I, I went off on the guy. I couldn't post anything on my YouTube for a while. It was only 30 seconds. Uh, it's ridiculous, man. But John Lear says we showed him the Billy Myers tapes. And, uh, you know, because it helps the bunk Bob. That's why the guy gave me a strike. And then the funny thing is all the Element 115 stuff, none of it came from classified programs. We have all the stuff that, you know, we talk about all the classified programs that were going on at Area 51 and the, the research that was being done, especially with regards to all the physics. And this element 115 stuff was going on at a certain um, la uh, a, a laboratory, but two guys uh, wrote about it in the, the May 1989 issue of, of Scientific American magazine. And it's, yeah, I heard all about that. <sighs> Bob actually talks about it in an, in, so, an old interview. He says, he literally says, we know that the island of stability is somewhere right around here, and he actually shows the chart from Scientific yeah. America. I shit you not. Yeah. So there was no internet back then. That's why the story got through, but it was totally debunked and it was gone for the longest time. And they started it back up again. It, it has like 15 year spurts, man. So, another interesting <laughs> thing about the story we want to talk about is that, you know, the picture from when he lived on uh, Woodland Hills, California. Okay, yeah. we get the article of him where he lived in Woodland Hills, California. Pierce Junior College is in Woodland Hills, California. It's the nearest school to where Bob Lazar lived. If you look up Martha Street, you know uh, this address. Yeah, it was right. It was right over the hill. So yeah, it's right over the hill where he went to college. So you, you you do all the research and you can put all these pieces together. He did not go to Caltech. He did not go to MIT. His family moved from New York to California right after high school. You know. Um, and he, and he, and he lived yeah. out there right next to this guy named Gluerov who was building these jet engines and strapping them to people's mm -hmm. bikes. And, and Bob was one of the guys that strapped this jet engine to his bike and was driving around, the, you know, town with this, you know, jet bicycle. And, yeah, uh, and he, people he, don't and, realize a jet's an easy motor to work. It's not like a these v things uh, were uh, really loud and super inefficient. And there's been, you know, a number of physicists talked about, you know, the, these these things, right? But that didn't stop Bob. He because I really it, it really shows a lot about Bob that he, he he has enough technical knowledge to try to show off to people that don't know anything about technical stuff, right? He was trained and, on fireworks with chemistry, man. That's where he right. learned everything chemistry and that's so, why he's able to do what he does today he that's didn't another part of the school. story yeah the, the 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 desert blast festival it's, it's really interesting we, we learned about this desert blast festival um that takes yeah. part out in the desert and um, bob lazar created this this festival with gene huff they're the guys that started yeah. it and they run it every year um, yeah george knapp interviewed him prior to meeting bob lazar he interviewed yeah. him about the desert blast which really blew me away when you learn, when you that. see those, so old... he already knew him. He already knew him. Everybody was already in place. He already knew him. Yeah. So Bob Lazar was doing Desert Blast. Um. You know. And 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 yeah. This is the this is a clip of Gene ha of George Knapp covering it with KLS News, and talking about. And this was like a year. I think this was a year before. Um, it's an ominous passage in the writings of Nostradamus. Fire. This was a year before. Um. Bob Lazar's story came out, and Bob Lazar was Bob Lazar, right? Now known all over the world. Bob came out in May of 1989. Companies scramble to get here, not to compete, but rather to show off their wares. This fireworks dealer flew from Australia. Everybody sort of knows about it, and it's one of those events where everyone wants to go to, um, but you can't necessarily get there. As the sun starts to set, preparations begin for the real show. Fireworks, fire bombs, and all things that go boom in the night. Yeah, 
Yeah, all this history, man. Um, where is him? I think there's a picture of him. Uh, yeah, so here's the... Out, it just launches out of there with a uh, section of lift powder. And it he rides around a dirt bike and, and is in the back, jumps in the back of the truck. Some are commercial products. Once yeah. the bombardment begins, it continues unabated for hours and hours and includes far more displays than any 4th of July show you've ever seen. Well, Jeremy, what's that second video you got down there where they show Bob and sunglasses right below there? Yeah, that's, that's from Desert this Blast, blast too. That's Gene Huff. Holy crap. Uh, yeah, that's a nice Desert night. Blast. Probably the most well known. That's on the TLC Amateur. channel. That was years later. Yeah, this was years later. But we go back to the original one. They they actually interviewed um you know, they, they showed Bob Lazar in the background and it was years before Bob Lazar was Bob Lazar, like to, to Gene mm -hmm. Huff, you know, like so he was already doing this sort of scientific level stuff, but really just on this it's always stuff that gets a lot of attention, you know, attention seeking. Um now, my favorite thing is the video Corbell does interviews him, and I'll post a link in the chat where he all of a sudden now has changed the story that the craft ran on two gravity amplifiers uh, instead of three. Um, and you know why that was changed, because I got an e email exchange with Bob um, asking him how, uh, how it was possible for them to shut the reactor off if you couldn't touch it once it became reactive because Bob demonstrates with his hands because I couldn't get my hands within two feet of it. It was a local uh, anti-gravity. Uh, uh, there was local anti-gravity taking place. So how could he remove the dome and get in there and pull the element 115 chip out of there? First of all, you've been irradiated and killed. I mean, it's so ridiculous if it was a true story. Um, but, but you should hear Corbell and he says, you mean to tell me you just pulled parts out of this craft? He goes, oh yeah, this had... One of the amplifiers is ripped out of here, and he says, and I would be very upset if I would have been part of the program. I'm going to put that link in the chat right at the spot where he starts talking about that because now all of a sudden the craft operated off two gravity amplifiers and not three. I mean, it just jumps around. People say, yeah, the people he hasn't say he hasn't changed the story, but there are a lot of things he has changed about the story over the years. If you really follow the story and you know the story and you pay attention to it. Um, and what's really weird is all those clips that you were using is out that this you had this whole library of debunking Bob clips and and then it's like they they found it and went through it and pulled all those <laughs> videos off the fucking net because you can't even find any of that stuff anymore. It's like and you were just using Bob's all all this old Bob Lazar you know yep. testimony and clips yeah. just like you know if you really that's a true story. I, I was placing all the videos all over the living moon and other places. And I was dumb and didn't privatize my YouTube channel and people were going to my playlist. And remember, Jeremy, I showed you that one day of about 30 videos. I think 25 or 26 of them were gone. I was yeah. like, holy yeah. shit. And I haven't been able to find half of them, I bet you. I should have. Well, Jeremy Corbell, them. Jeremy Corbell, man, he plays dirty. He, he, he doesn't address the evidence. He blocks you from his, he block you from his channel, block you from his videos, you know. He's a narcissist. I don't understand why he didn't d didn't go to MIT or Caltech. You want to you would want to prove Bob was a physicist because George Knapp states right in the Denmark in, or, or in the Denmark speech he gives or Copenhagen. I'm sorry that he doesn't believe Bob Lazar had any of the degrees he declaimed, and he doesn't believe Bob Lazar could ever sit through a class. And you're sitting there like, well, then why did you believe him? And then he's like, the first show we ever did, we couldn't verify his background. Um, you know, George Knapp knows. He knows what he knows the truth. Yeah, the he knows the story after doing it this long and this many years. But he also understands that his whole like career is built on it, and he just kind of like almost like married to it in a certain sense. And that you know, and, and he keep, needs to keep his position within the whole UFO structure and field. And 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 what that position is, I'm I'm still trying to like you know understand because you know they got pictures of him hanging out with he's he's hanging out with george richard doty now he's hanging out with rick yep. doty interviewing look he what it says our pal rick doty richard doty's the one that started the whole entire lie story yeah. about aliens being at area 51 at, at uh in 1988 
He was on UFO cover up live, and he um, says that the scale of one to ten, one big one this, area fifty one. Uh, completely bogus. Oh, here's where he lies and really says that uh, yeah, that he was at S two and Bob it, had it wrong. They did this, so they're hanging yeah. out doing interviews with each other, and then he he says all about S two, and you know, he's just John spreading. John Lear hates him. He hates Richard Doty. He does not like Richard Doty. Richard I think Doty's Richard Doty's liars. He's still employed by the U.S. Air Force. Oh yeah, these I mean, these people can all be disinfo agents, man. They we are. Just they, they just laugh. Never know. They just put it in your face now. That's so that's how blatant they are with it. That like you know, Rick, Rick Doty came out with his story, and he's just like here. You know, they they did it. They did it at this one point to the UFO community just to to, to shove it in their face. Like, no, we got you guys completely fucking fooled. You don't I know your Bob ass from your elbow. And, I think Bob sits back and laughs about this. He's a narcissist, man. He thinks this is hilarious. He thinks it's fucking funny, man. I bet. Yeah, there's no uh, there's no other explanation for it. Um, he will that, never that, that debate anybody. Me. He no, doesn't debate anybody. Um, Joe Rogan, he picked the people. Were all he picked selected. people like like Jeremy Corbell. Like, why do you think he let right. John Jeremy Corbell be the one to do the story on him and and, and do because this? Because Jeremy Corbell would play ball if he had a serious investigator before Kevin Moore became this bullshit. We are Chandlers uh, thing. Kevin Moore went and interviewed Tracy Lazar, and Tracy Lazar compared Bob Lazar to a guy named. Um, it's not the guy's real name, but his last name, uh, as Rockefeller, he was a con artist. Um, he ended up being a killer and, um, damn, what was his name? Everybody should look it up. Um, the fake Rockefeller. Anyways, she said, Bob, that is a total lie. Jean, that, that she was never threatened. The whole, they made the entire story up. It's all bullshit. And Kevin Moore had it all. And then Kevin started doing the, we are Chandler things. So Kevin discredited himself, just like a guy said tonight. Why would you even bring Kevin up? He does all that crap, that channeling crap. And I was like, yeah, you're right. He he fucked himself. So any word from him, I guess, is going to be no good. But Tracy Lazar broke it all down and said it was all bullshit. And I know some stuff. Um, you know, right. I know, I know you you've you've gone deep on the case. Talked to the, the a lot of the original people. I know you're in with John Lear, and you've you've been you've talked to him quite a bit. Um, and yeah, I really like John Lear. He's uh, John Lear. Some people don't like him. I, him and I never talk about Bob Lazar, though. We always talk about uh, other things. Um, but uh, yeah, I was I was in Sharper. with them guys. I was in with all those guys fifteen years ago for about four or five years, and and then uh, with in the forums and all that, I was I supported John Lear as like his number one backup guy. I have proof of that, and um, I was in, and then there was some stuff I was told not to look at and it was really weird. I was sent a video and in that video, I realized that, holy shit, they walk up, bump the camera and make it look like that dot in the sky skipping across the sky. Yeah. So like, let's talk about the, U that, that UFO video, um, this, the Wednesday night flights. Yep. And none, of, and they're all watching it and they all say, no, I didn't see what it didn't. It supposedly skipped across the sky, 30 miles, you know, and you can hear Gene Huff walk up to it. You can hear his feet. And when them cameras back then, you touched him. The mic was so sensitive. He bounces the camera. You can hear it. And, and, and as soon as he does that, the light just skips sideways and goes right back to where it was. He tipped the, uh, he tipped the camera, man. Yeah, no, I, I seen that. Uh, I I can't find the video. Look, you you search for this stuff and you can't even find it now. It's it's like they buried all this stuff, but people people want to use it. Is. it. And buried, I know, man. You take Bob, good luck. You have to find you have to type in like Bob Lazar by years of like upload years, like night try like 2006 yeah, or filter. Something. Yeah, every it has to be posted before. Hear me if you want me to find it. Date, uh, no, it had to be like three years ago, <laughs> you know, sort by upload date. There we go. This is it. If you'd like to uh, come here later in the show, we'll tell you exactly how to get here. All right, you can mention who's with you, John. Uh, we have Bob Lazar, and we have um, Jackie uh, Lazar, Bob's wife, and we have Gene Huff. And this mission was organized tonight uh, by Bob Lazar, who is a, uh, a, um, a theoretical physicist who works at Groom Lane. <laughs> <laughs> and is also a dead man at this point. <laughs> 
it's on film that he wrote yeah, it. Right. <laughs> I'm happy. You want your name on there that you're yeah. We're out here with the late Bob Lazar. <laughs> That's not. So it's just, I, I, sent, I sent you the link, man. It's this a sun the aperture thing. This is the one that, that that guy did where they blew it up and did yeah. this effect on it. And made I know. It I know who did that. He's actually a good friend of mine now, and he's and this a morphing it, program. Yeah. This is it. It's earlier. Dodge security yeah. patrols. It moved around. It did a step move. It actually went up in the air like this and hovered, then dropped way down, then it just floated around. This is old school around, history, and then it man. Coming up the mountain range. This home videotape was recorded during one of the trips to the Groom Mountains. Okay. Good luck. No, what? Did you see that move it did? No, I didn't. It, it was like I a kept doing... Whoa! Whoa, how bright it's getting! Look at it now. It's getting bright. Not here, bright hold. enough for me to get the sun of a Here, hold on, right here. No, what? Did you see that move? No, I didn't. They're no, looking right at Good they're guy. looking right at Creech Air Force Base. Good That's guy. what's so funny. Their mailbox no, road looking south. That was the bump yeah. of the camera, you know. Yeah, you can clearly hear it. I mean, it's I, when I saw that, I was sent that by someone. I'm not gonna. It's say funny no. how they edit it, edit it to like hide that in that they start it right where the bump is, and then they, you know, they edit it so it, it kind of hides that. That's funny. Well, and, and listen, play it again. Why does Bob Lazar not see it? They're all watching the UFO, right? Listen to Bob. He says, "No, I didn't see it. No, how can he not see it? it? No, I didn't. It it like like no, I didn't. didn't. No, what? Did you see that move? It did. No, I didn't. It, it went like, like I kept doing. Look at it now. Here well, he might have been facing the other way, you know, who knows. Ah, uh, bullshit. Yeah. You're not going <laughs> to take your eyes off. Are you going to take your eyes off an uh, alien flying saucer? Play that again yeah. and listen to this when he grabs the camera. Just listen. Turn your headphones up, folks. Yeah, no, I, I've already done this in slow motion on the other video, and I'm gonna I'm gonna put it together when, I, when we do the Bob Lazar documentary. Anyways, yeah, I, I'm sorry we got sucked in the Bob Lazar thing, but it's just crazy when you you, you go and watch uh, Jeremy Corbell do a live stream. They don't bring any skeptics on. They don't address any evidence whatsoever, and all the arguments they put on and, and bring out are just all these emotionally based ones that. It, it, it was just pathetic watching it, and uh, I'm just like I can't wait for. Uh, I hate to admit it, but I was a lot like Corbell back in 2004, 2005. I wanted to believe the story so bad that it didn't matter what Glenn Campbell or the other old school guys back then would say Tom LaHood. I would, I would pretend I wasn't seeing it. And I was told by Lear, don't look into any of that stuff, you know, It'll contaminate your mind or whatever. And that's kind of the message Corbell preaches, you know, they, they don't say research anything. Did, do they, Jeremy? They don't say anything about no, research. No, they don't the say facts. anything about getting into the facts. They didn't really no. get say into all any you have to evidence do is just at all. Listen. Listen. Said, just listen to Bob. Listen to Bob. You know he's telling the truth. And it was it was really just like this. I mean, it's just a it's a good introduction for the, all these new researchers to like. You know, oh. it's going to weed out. It's going to weed out the people that are you know in this to. Yeah, Jeremy, show the Georgia Damsky fake craft there where it's got the three balls hanging out from underneath it. I think that's where he got the gravity amplifier stuff. From yeah. Too, because that type of video would have been out back when John Lear was showing him the uh, the video footage that he had had that he traded Gene Huff and 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 for the uh, home appraisal. Mm-hmm. And remember, they had been watching Bob Laz Bob Lazar and Gene Huff have been sitting around on Saturdays watching John Lear on the TV show called On the Record, which George Knapp did in 1987. They watched him, and in 88, they were watching him and couldn't believe the people that were calling in about the UFO stuff was just totally insane. They get involved in it, and then the whole thing is, oh, man, Bob was never into UFOs. Yeah, you were, Bob. You were into UFOs, and you know it. Um, I there were guys is... from West Alamos used to work for that I talked to that said absolutely and, uh, UFOs and other things I won't mention. This is the other cool thing, too. I'm going to post this in the chat. People need to check out this um, UFO cover-up live, and this was posted in 1988. 
a year before oh. Bob Lazar came out with this whole story. And this was on like mainstream television back in the day. Richard Doty is one of these guys on the aviary. And um, he's the one that came up with S4. He's the one that came. No, Richard Doty was an aviary. Oh, yeah. Richard Doty was. Uh, um, he's Falcon. He was Falcon. And then the other guy. Um, Jesus, I used to have all this stuff memorized in like two seconds. My brain's fried tonight. Right, we're gonna put this all together in the documentary, though. That we're gonna we're gonna do because uh, it's so much. It's so interesting when you there watch parts of that thing, right? So this is the Falcon. Yeah, he and he says on here about Zeta Reticuli aliens run Area Fifty One, and that's a yeah. whole lot. No. Yep, he talks about the Zeta Reticuli aliens and the MJ-12 and the, the government Bible, too. They yeah, mentioned about the excerpts right. from the government Bible, and that, that was Bob Lazar's name of his documentary that, that he did with Gene yep. Huff afterwards. So it's, it's kind of interesting. They borrowed a lot of this from UFO. They took all the UFO culture and the lore of the time, and, and, and we're just like, how can we create the biggest, yeah. most successful UFO story um, and hoax of all time? Like, how can we do this? You know, no. Hang, hang on a minute here. Richard Doty was an I or an Air or an United States Air Force OSI Office of Special Get Investigation Disinformation Agent, and they just happened to follow what he says. How do you know they weren't disinformation agents? Bill Moore, for Christ's sakes, was a guy that went around giving UFO lectures. He was one of the biggest Roswell guys. He was a buddy of Stanton Freeman's. He comes out at the 1989. Um, UF, IUFOC thing and explains that he's a disinformation agent working for the OSI and NSA for goodness sakes. Bill Moore um, he just, it just goes to show you how easily they're infiltrated and they pay these guys and yeah. you know, we just don't know. Bob could have been disinfo and they could have wanted to create a narrative it sure seems like Richard Doty was creating the narrative was Hey, nothing that's at Area 51 is human. It's all alien. So if you see something crazy in the sky, it's not that the United States figured out anti-gravity. It's that there's a bunch of aliens living there, and people bought it. Right. Yeah, it was and they're the still biggest using the misdirection, and, and it's still being used today. I mean, look, look at Bob. Look at Joe Rogan. The dude's a total fucking tool. I hate, I don't hate Joe Rogan since then, but I will not watch his show because you know what? Yeah, Joe I won't Rogan, either. He really fell off, man. He used to do a lot of truth seeking and you know a lot of like uh, open minded stuff, and but his research uh, is just that 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 just like really put. Well, he talks as his friend Joey, uh, his friend Joey. Um, I know Sanchez he gets or whatever his name ratted him out for being involved with C having dinner with CIA agents and. This could all be a government thing, and every five yeah. years they're probably like, "We got to bring up the UFO stuff again," you know, because yeah. we got yeah. flying around, and, and we got to make sure people think it's aliens. I'm not. I don't. I, I absolutely believe aliens exist, and I believe in UFOs and stuff. But a lot of the crap is bullshit, man. Yeah, that's crazy. Yeah, it's all bullshit. A lot of it, almost all of it is. I wouldn't doubt almost it. I wouldn't there. doubt it if Rogan's having dinner with the CIA and 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 you know signing backdoor agreements to like you know debunk. See, they're, they're like, this is what you got to debunk, and these are the safe things, and don't talk and about the whole. Yeah, the don't whole talk migraine. about the. Yeah. When he began to talk about it on one fifteen, he couldn't remember his bullshit, so he said he had a migraine. But continues an interview for two hours after that. Um, yeah, yeah. you know, people that tell stories, he doesn't have Gene Huff there anymore to hold his hand. That's a big issue. Where is Gene Huff at? Gene, are you out there? We gotta get I think Gene, Gene Huff, Huff is too. no, and that's the same thing with Tracy Lazar. They'll be hated by the Bob Lazar cult, man. It's crazy. It really right. And, uh, they don't want to come out because it's like this, they're just going to make themselves huge targets for these people, you know, like that or the, the yeah. My life's been threatened already just by trying to tell the truth about what the facts are. I'm not saying don't believe Bob or not. I'm just trying to show you what the facts are as we can see, not the fantasy. Because yeah, if you believe yeah. the fantasy, you absolutely will believe the story. We're showing you pictures, images of Papoose Lake right there that are no different from images from 52. So how could there have been this incredible base there with 360 feet worth of hangars that, Jesus, I mean, do you have any idea what the uh, – the amount of vehicles and stuff that would have had to have been in and out of there every day, logistics wise, to, to support a place like that, it would be 
shit, a ton of people would have been working there. Someone else would have came out by now. I just don't get why they would pick Bob. I mean, he was friends with John Lear. Um, he was filed for bankruptcy in 1986. Um, borrowed money and owed money to all kinds of people. You know, was just irresponsible yeah. with money. He's a definite target for espionage, or, you know, or foreign intelligence yeah, collection yeah. because of that. That would have got him rejected for a background check right there. Um, is your other guest? Is your other guest still here? Let him say something, or did he leave? No, I had mic problems and he dropped out. Um, but I just thought it was super. You know, you go into all the details of the Bob Lazar case and really dive into the history of what he was doing every step of the, this process, and it just it the looks like he it looks line. like he was he was. It just gives you this whole clear. You know, it, maybe the CIA planted all that stuff, and it, yeah, yeah, they erased his background. I don't think so, dude. This is the 1980s, yeah. and he was relying on people not being able to research it or, you know, or do right, the research right. and stuff. That's what the young people have problems with. They don't realize that there was a life without the internet. I remember yeah. it very well. Um, there was I an, remember when you didn't well. have a cell phone, you had to go to someone's house and use their phone to call home, you know, like, you know, there was no way to get a hold of people. They're just, you know, there's just, like there's enough, ev- there's definitely enough evidence out there. If you dig, you, and when I say evidence, don't, you, you can watch the Bob Lazar movies and all that stuff. But that's what they want you to see. You yeah. gotta actually you got to read between the lines. You got to look at what Bob's not telling yeah. you, what he it's what he Bob skips Bob. over and misses over, and you got to pay attention to those key details, like when when he says like, oh, from nineteen early nineteen eighties when I worked at Los Alamos up until you know late nineteen eighty nine, the end of nineteen eighty nine, you know. When yeah. I was working out at Area 51, it's like, well, you just jumped over this whole big gap in time, and, and that's a big part of the story, is all the stuff that happened in between then, because it if paints you, a... Yeah. If, if you type in Glenn Campbell's name and Papoose Primer, I believe it is, those guys, the Interceptors, uh, they were up on top of several mountains. They went to several different mountain peaks right after the Bob Lazar story came out. And we're looking, they got one spot where they can look right down in Papoose Lake, man. And they looked and they were up there month after month after month. And they never have seen anything, even, even, a, they never even seen a vehicle at Papoose Lake. Yeah, they these guys, these, anything. these were some of the original investigators, man. This was a good team. John Andrews from Testers Corporation, Jim Goodall. Uh, Mark Farmer. Mark Farmer did that interview with. He went actually and found people from Los Alamos that, that knew Lazar, worked with Lazar, and 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 that interviewed him. Yeah. And there was a couple of those interviews that you sent me that I read, and they were um, they were real interesting in piecing together the whole history of what Bob Lazar was really doing between 1982 and 1989. Um, I'm gonna try and find this one where the papus where the primer is where George, where Glenn Campbell says and he, t- he shows a picture of them up on top of this mountain and they're looking down into Papoose Lake and they had a good view of it and they did it night after night, week after week, and never once saw anything. Um and I, I'm not making this up. I mean, this is stuff I didn't want to didn't want to hear a long time ago. It's true. Yeah, anyone who watches the old interviews with Bob and and Gene, Gene was totally the ha- handler. He was basically what what jo- Jeremy Corbell was trying to do for jo- for Bob on Joe Rogan, you know, is answer all his questions for him and you know help him remember his know, story. He doesn't go near enough. He hasn't been around the mountain long enough. He people no. think he's an expert. He's only been doing this shit for what eight years. That's nothing. Oh God! When he was listening, he was trying to impress people and list off all these top secret projects and stuff about like, oh, what the military was really doing out at Area Fifty One, and that proves Bob. But it's all the stuff that goes to prove Bob Lazar was telling the truth, and all like literally like I didn't know all the projects he mentioned, but the the three that I did recognize were ones I I, I know for a fact are disinformation. They're copycats. They're guys that copied Bob Lazar. And you know they're liars because they copy the same information, you know, the same stuff we, you know, that's been debunked about, like that S four. It was at, you know, Papoose Lake, and you know, there's there's all these stories, you know, like the Project Looking Gas stuff, and then uh, you know, was that Andrew Basaggio guy, and and all, all those people that claim to be um, time travelers and and and, um, and whatnot, and involved in this whole, you know, Project Pegasus and Project, you know, Looking Glass and all this. 
And I'm like, really? This is what you're, you know, you're using as your evidence to, to support Bob Lazar and stuff. And it's just like, dude, like, there's so well, much. Money. Friend of Bob's, and he wants to absolutely percent. And you know, I know how that is. I know exactly how that is. You get contaminated. But I guarantee you, there is doubt in the back of Corbell's mind. He can say he's not harboring doubt. He absolutely is because I was too when I was a Bob Lazar supporter. Yeah, how couldn't you be? I mean, I don't know. If you don't have any doubt, then you know that then that's a big problem, I guess. But yeah, there's just doubt. People have doubt. Uh, no doubt. Well, I, I I believed Bob for a number of years. He's the one that got me. I would have never done the research that I've done or got involved with this. I don't think if it weren't for Bob. Mm -hmm. Although you know, there, there's certain other things that drew me into this. Um, yeah. So I don't know. It's hard to say, but. Um, and maybe maybe I wouldn't have wasted so much time on nonsense if it weren't for Bob too, you know, because I did chase that story, you know, believing in it and wanting it to be true for a number of years until I just, you know, we, we beat this thing down so thoroughly on the old alien scientist forum where we had, you know, former Area 51 employees working yeah. with us to like really, you know, show us the ins and outs and be like, well, this is what he's, you know, you know, it's really Barnes in an interview a couple months back, three months back. Yeah, whatever. that TD Barnes interview. I'll go look that up. Go, go on. The guy interviewing him was like so up. He's like, "What do you mean?" He's like, "Man, I was there thirty some years. That story's all bullshit." He's like, "You know, it's 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 not true." And you could tell the interviewer was like, "And, and what's he going to do? Tell Thornton Barnes that he's lying? The head of the Interceptor? I mean, the head? Yeah, yeah." Runners International, that's all for former Area 51 employees. You're going to tell him that you're wrong, that he's wrong? I mean, the guy was, like, so shocked. He didn't know what to say, I think. Yeah, the dude uh, Hidden Truth show with Jim Bres Breslow. Mm -hmm. That was the one. Yeah, this is Well, it. like I said, the most important now, stuff is the uh, those pictures that just came now out. Now for our that's interview with former Area 51. Yeah, this was key. Um, definitely key part of the Bob Lazar story, if people want to believe it, you know. Uh, why would T.D. Barnes lie? And you know he would. You know he's got a lot to a lot of information. Um, he he's in the know, and uh, I don't think he would lie about this. And he if he if if Bob Lazar worked out there, he would have known about it for sure. So in any case, I'm getting tired, and I don't know what's yeah. going on with these two things, and I'm I'm losing steam. So I'm I don't gonna, know why. I don't even know how you can have on your channel. Two live, it's supposed to be impossible to have two running at once. UFO Jane was on here. Hold up, I think I saw her. Was she on here? Did she jump on? She seemed she seemed pretty cool. She didn't get to say yeah. much. She tried she to cool. she tried to go as a, a little skeptical view, and she was shut down right away. Yeah, she so she just like, no, I'm not gonna bother, and that's good. You know, no, no, you know, leave that up to us. You know, you don't have to get everyone hating you too you know let them hate us until they until they realize we're right you know what i mean yeah yeah you know? yeah, yeah you're gonna be real serious by bringing a comedian on there who's just got involved in this not long ago doesn't know his ass from a hole in the ground when it comes to UFOs. but all oh, he was out at uh a storm area 51 man so that that gives him credibility i guess you know yeah, yeah fucking break dude yeah right I'd sit here i'd school that guy on ufo uh Different UFO I want to cases. find someone to come have you come on and, and do a um, a debate. You know, I want to get a debate like hosted. You know, where we get a but I want to get like a roundtable discussion where we get everyone yelling at each other and calling each Love other. Love set it up. You fucking you're not, you know. I want to, I want some I want punches and blood. You know, dude, it would be so. Easy. <laughs> all I do is just use the facts. I would, all I do is just use facts. It would be so easy to win. I would just use the facts. It's so freaking easy. I'll just be, I'll, I'd go right to the Papoos pictures and the lake and be like, okay, explain to me where the base is again. Oh, but it's camouflaged. Okay. Okay. You know, it'd be, it, it wouldn't even, it wouldn't even be a contest. And there's other, there's other ways I go about it, but just now that we have new pictures again, it's so fantastic. Again, that, yeah. sorry, you know, the people, uh, we took, took so long to get that out. Maybe we'll make a quicker, version of this um with you know edited highlights real you need to do a very short video it's 20 minutes long and just nail the facts yeah that's, that's what we're instead gonna of do. we're just what we're all we're doing is just gibbering right now jumping we had no 
outline. I, know. I got a clear outline. You saw the script I've been working on. Uh, why don't we hang up the stream yeah. and, and, and and let's uh, let's talk about that for a little bit. And um, yeah. and all uh, right, close the stream. Yep. All right. Thanks, we're guys. We'll leave the studio later, everybody. Thanks for watching and uh, and broadcast. This was a good experiment to to try out the the new stream yard. Um, yeah. Not now. We're not going to send feedback now. So yeah, thanks and um, thanks, guys. And uh, I'm going to end this right here. Um, and, yeah, sorry we had to waste so many people's time talking about Bob Lazar again. But, you know, heck, we'll have some more. In back to more interesting uh, and and relevant topics on the next stream. And I'm going to save Bob Lazar again, again for uh, doing a um, more thorough and well-processed, well-thought-out, well-organized documentary. It needs to be done, man. It just, I, I can't keep doing this. You know, I can't, just, I just need to make one video that I'm just like, here, just show people this. This is the video. And and it's just over for them, you know, where people are like watching this and they're like, oh, wait, Bob Lazar is, is not, you know, all this stuff is, you know, not really the right information, but this is all, you know, some of the real information that maybe we should be looking into. So. Hopefully we'll get some people, um, if I do it right, we'll, uh, we can wake a lot of people up. That's what I'm hoping for anyway. And uh, thanks for watching. I'm going to call it a night. I'm fucking tired. <laughs>